Shalom and welcome back to Talking Torah. I'm Rabbi Ravid Tillis and I'm here with Leslie Levy. And I'm very excited not only to invite Leslie here, but to be back. Talking Torah had taken a bit of a hiatus over the last few weeks with Passover and, and all that preparation. And then the holiday itself took up many of, uh, many of the potential days to film Talking Torah. So though we're back and we're strong and we're ready to go. And I'm very excited to welcome Leslie Levy here. And Leslie is here not only on her own behalf, but on behalf of her group that she started here with the synagogue, the Special Needs Informal Parent Support Group that we call SNPs. I want to give Leslie a minute to talk about that group so that she can um, tell you all about the good work that she's doing. The mission of the group is to provide a safe space and a private space for those parents who are experiencing the challenges of raising a Jewish child with special needs. And I figured doing it at the synagogue would be a good place for it because this way it gives us an excuse to come here. I know for me um, it's been a while since I've been here and I used to be very involved and things got really crazy in my family so I took a step back and I'm using this as a, a way of getting me back into the building. Well, we're, we're really glad. And, you know, one of the things that, Leslie, that you're doing so well is you are really creating an informal, comfortable space. That's really what it's about. You know, there are plenty of, uh, there are other support groups out there for parents with spe uh, special needs, but the two things that are unique, one is the Jewish element of it, and the other one is really that informal piece um, that, that makes it feel really very casual. So you can come whenever you want. Be in touch with Leslie. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put Leslie's email address at the bottom um, of, of this video. And then that way, uh, if you want to be in touch with Leslie, she can kind of build the timing around your schedule and around the schedules of other people as well. So she's really very flexible in that way. So great. And so thank you for having me. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. I'm very excited to talk about this week's Parsha, Parshat and more, which happens to have been my bar mitzvah Parsha however many years ago, and so, uh, so I, it's very close to my heart, and, um, and I'm really glad to be talking with you. So I know that you had something about the Parsha that really jumped out to you, especially as we think about um, those in our community who have special needs, so I was hoping you'd share that. So in the, I think it is five times that the Lord speaks to Moses, um, and it's all about the priests. He says to him, he, God says to Moses, and make sure those priests um, don't have any blemishes and don't have any, they're not short of stature, they don't have any physical, att uh, physical attributes that make them look a little different. And that, um, that really made me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Because I think in our 21st century, especially now, um, with the push in of people with special needs into the community and the idea that inclusion really means inclusion for everyone, um, I think that that's really hard for me to, it doesn't resonate at all for me. Right. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah it's troublesome for certain. And, you know, this is, this is something that we see throughout, not only in this week's Parsha, but this, this need, this desire for what one would consider perfection that, that um, during the time of the Torah, uh, one was seen as being imperfect if they had a blemish on their skin or if they were shorter of stature, or certainly any, um, anyone who had some kind of special needs. And the, keep in mind, you know, only 40, 50, 60 years ago, those who had special needs were also isolated and kept out of the community, let alone, you know, a few thousand years ago. So, uh, so if you, you can imagine, but when we talk about this idea of perfection and tameh versus tahor, purity versus impurity, right? We, that concept has really changed uh, drastically over the course of Jewish history. And now we've gotten to the point where the idea of tahara, the idea of purity, it, anybody can achieve that status. And similarly, anybody can achieve, achieve the status of Tamed, being impure. You know, it, it's, um, it's not about what we look like, and it's not about our mental capacity or our IQ. It has nothing to do with any of that. 
our ability to be perfect has to do with our ability to re- to be in relationship with others. If, if you can bring love and you can bring kindness and you can bring goodness into the world, no matter, no matter what your capabilities are, um, then you achieve the status of Tahara, you achieve the status of being uh, pure. And, and that's kind of what we've begun, the way we've begun to understand uh, purity versus impurity at this point. Does that make you feel any better? It does. It makes me feel better because it, it, it allows now for the, someone's spirit, someone's mm-hmm. intention, exactly. someone's kavana That's it. to come forward and to be really, not to be graded or, or whatever, not that's not the right word, but to be, to be appreciated for right. what it is that they bring as a person, as their, as their best self. Exactly. And we all make mistakes. But, you know, on, on any given day, we try to live our lives as our best selves. Right. And that's, yeah, it's, that's perfect because the, so much of the Bible talks about the body, right? And the body is important, but the body, we know our tradition tells us the body is simply a vessel, mm-hmm. right? And included in that, the body includes the brain, right? right? And, and so these physical attributes are only the vessels. To, that, that hold our soul. And so what we know is that that God, the soul you have given us is tehora, is pure. And, and that belief, that idea is really what carries the day now. Less so about the, the body or the mind being impure, the soul is always pure and we have to make sure that we celebrate everybody's souls. Uh, just, you know, keeping in mind that their souls are what makes them unique and what make them special, and their bodies being different is not an impurity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But that also makes them special, too, because yeah, sure. you know, yeah. people with different colored eyes or right. different colored hair sure. and short or tall, um, you know, that's what makes us unique, too. Absolutely. 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 It's a part of us. Mm-hmm. Good. So thank you so much for bringing that, uh, that thought and bringing that out of this, morning, uh, this week's Torah reading. I, I think that you know, your group, uh, the SNPs, is really a fantastic way for our synagogue to be more inclusive uh, and more understanding of everybody's souls. And so I thank you for the hard work that you're doing. And if you, if anybody knows someone in their family or in their, in their circle that would, could use the help as a parent of someone who has special needs, um, whatever that means, it's a very wide range, yes. the, the parents who come to your group. Um, Please, please be in touch with Leslie. Email her at, uh, again, we'll have the email at the bottom of the video. And um, please, please reach out to Leslie. I want to make a quick note about this coming Shabbat, which is um, that we are going to be interviewing a potential new cantor, um, cantor Jonathan Angris, who is currently a cantorial student at JTS, but will be graduating in May, um, and so if you're able to come out, give Jonathan a little bit of support, Cantor Angus a little bit of support, um, and also that way you can see if you would want Cantor Angus to be the new Cantor at the Mary Jewish Center, and you'll be able to share your thoughts later in the week. So, so thank you so much to, to Leslie for joining me, and thank you all for watching. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat shalom. and Lehitra Ode.